Service is not always about the smile. It's about a feeling, a vibe we create, a space of energy where others can feel blissfulness and tranquility, ultimate euphoria, yet ultimate peace, serenity. Visitors happy is about building experiences specifically designed to leave them with feelings and memories worth sharing. Feelings and vibrations that make them think about us. Maybe in a conversation or a different country. But may they always have a smile when they're thinking about us. Curacao. Ladies and gentlemen, bon dia, good morning. Welcome to another Chata Stay Home Academy webinar. Um, my name is Gedeon Verkerk. I'm the communications executive at Chata. And today we have uh, another interesting uh, webinar with um, our members from DNI and um, Wanna Grow. We have Daniel Carson and Elamika van Beek who, it, who are going to um, teach us and give us uh, tips for remote leadership, communication, and team building. And of course, they're gonna tell us how to make this fun. And um, um, so basically, this is the first part of the, of the webinar um, on, let me see. Yes, we, we have another um, episode coming up um, on, um, that is on Friday. Um, so that's going to be part two of the, of the webinar, but today um, we have the first part. So I would like to pass on the word to Daniel, who is going to give you a better introduction of what we're going to hear and learn about today. Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for the pass, Gideon. Just checking. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Okay, awesome. So hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar called Connecting Your Team While Working Remotely. My name is Daniel, and I am the Chief Reshaper at DNI. And today in the session with me, I have uh, Alamika. She's the owner and manager of WannaGrow. She'll be doing a short introduction uh, shortly. Uh, my background, uh, personally, is in organization design and transformation. And our mission at DNI is to help organizations transform their business so that they can thrive in this day and age. Uh, basically, in, in very simple terms, the question we exist uh, to answer is uh, how do we help organizations and their people transform? Basically, in all that we do, that is the, this is the main question that we try to answer together with our, with our customers. So um, I promise that this will not be a sales pitch today as I believe that this is not the time where people want to be sold at. Um, as I said, I'm pleased to introduce and have uh, uh, with me on this session today and leading our session on Friday, Alamika van Beek, who's the owner and manager of Wanna Grow and Wanna Go Outdoors. She'll be, uh, as I said, your host of part two on Friday. And today she joins me in answering your question while also sharing some insights throughout your presentation. Alamika, would you like to say hi to our participants this morning and tell us a bit about yourself and your business? I think your mic is on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Sorry. <laughs> well, what an introduction. Um, Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Elamika van Beek. Thank you, Daniel, for, um, for having me here. And uh, of course, thank you, Chata, for your uh, fantastic and awesome effort in uh, keeping us motivated and sharing all the knowledge uh, for all these opportunities. Um, Gideon and, and Miles and the whole team, thanks so much. Um, yes, uh, Daniel, thanks for giving me the opportunity to introduce myself. Um, I'm the owner and manager of Wanna Go Outdoors and Wanna Grow. And also we, we try to support organizations, both corporate and government in their growth process. 
And um, what we do is we do not do uh, endless uh, leadership and man management development trajectories, but we really differentiate um, by uh, going outside and play outside because playing is, we think, the uh, most efficient way to learn. And also we like to take you out of your comfort zone because only then that's a very important condition to learn. And I think that's what, um, uh, yes, Daniel and I have in common. And um, that's also why I appreciate that uh, we, yeah, that you, Daniel, want to do this together with us because I really believe in this uh, challenge, in these challenging times, we uh, need to collaborate much more. And uh, yes, we are like-minded people and we can also complement and learn from each other. Awesome, thank you, Elamika. Uh, and indeed, I'm, I'm very happy to be working together with you on this uh, during this week. We share a passion indeed for for growing and uh well also making it fun huh? growing doesn't necessarily have Absolutely. to be painful so uh thank you thank you for being here with us today and thanks as well to all the participants who are joining in on the session this morning uh before diving into the session some house rules a couple of things to to bear in mind while we go through the webinar and the presentation this morning uh as i understood from chata we are live on facebook uh the webinar is also being recorded and it will be available on demand for you after the live session. Uh, I think uh, also via Facebook as well as uh, via email to all Chata members. Together, uh, I will also send some attachments uh, belonging to this presentation to be shared with you. And throughout the session, as uh, Gideon indicated earlier, we'd like to hear from you. So feel free to use your, uh, the chat tab, add your questions. Um, throughout the session, we'll be answering some of the questions you have. Um, but at the end, we'll also have a short 15-minute Q&A. And I really hope that Alimika and I would be able to get to your questions. If that's not the case, we will do our best to follow up with any questions that remain open after to this session. Um, so let's get going. Before, uh, before getting into the content, I would like to uh, do a quick check-in with you. I don't know if that's possible, uh, Gedeon, but let's try. Uh, at DNI, we have a ritual that is called the check-in. Uh, basically, or it's literally the first question, it's a question of how are you doing that we ask at the start of every meeting. Uh, why do we do this? We do this to help people disconnect from whatever thoughts they came in with. Um, and hopefully by doing that, also making people able to focus more uh, and be focused and stay focused uh, during the meeting. So I'd like to ask you to share with us in the chat or in the questions, what's on your mind or anything that you'd like to share with us. Obviously, uh, we might not know one another, but something, a, a thought that's running through your mind this morning while joining in on the session, or if there's anything you would like to share with us, uh, just to give you an idea, I'm going to share with mine. Uh, this morning, what's on my mind is uh, the uncertainty that we're all facing. Uh, we've been spending some time at DNI these past days thinking about uh, recovery uh, in the sense that how are we going to transform our own business this time? Huh? The transformation also pertains to our business. It's also something that I was talking to Elamika about yesterday. Um, and I'm constantly thinking about as well how I can be there for my team because uh, without any doubt, I believe these to be uh, emotionally heavy times. And so I'm, I'm constantly thinking how I can be there, uh, not as a boss, but as a person of support uh, to, my, to my colleagues and my team members. Um, can we, uh, Alamika, maybe you would like to share uh, what's on your mind with us this morning? Yes, yes. The, the bigger and the smaller things, of course, I'm also like everyone uh, concerned about the future, but uh, especially I see opportunities. But now, for example, what is on my mind is um, is my is that I w was not able to adjust my virtual background, and uh, I think <laughs> that's um, very funny because um, uh, because obviously you have that arranged very well, and um, and I I I was not uh, able to uh, to arrange yeah. that, and now it's. Um, on me to let this go and uh, and uh, you know and 
I'm here and my background is not that fancy, but I'm here and that's, uh, I guess, uh, most important. And you're looking great. Thanks. So I see that we are getting some input from our participant, which is great. I see that Yolanda, she's energized as the start of her day today was a swim in the sea. I'm looking forward to doing the same, hopefully tomorrow. Um, and uh, Yolanda is also curious uh, as she wants to deepen the remote connection with her team. So I really hope, Yolanda, that we're able to help you and uh, give you some ideas, tips and tricks of what you could take on with your team. Kurt, Kla Kurt also shares that he's doing excellent, even in this stressful moment. I think that is wonderful. Um, if people uh, manage to, to be feeling excellent, uh, but basically being isolated from most of the world and physical contact. Petra, uh, she uh, basically has a question uh, pondering that she's pondering on how that she, how she can stay connected with her team while they're just sitting at work, as work uh, could only be done on property in her case. Maybe that's something we can look into it as well uh, throughout the session today. And Alette uh, is thinking about guidelines for her team to create inspiring updates from their home offices to the social followers that they have online. Also something nice to be looking into it. Thank you very much for your input, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I really appreciate it. Maybe this is a quick thing you could also pick up with your team when doing your check-in. And um, we, we've seen that it really helps uh, DNI uh, in our team to ease, uh, to ease in somewhat uh, the tension that might have in the day to day and as well to get people connected to the session. Um, we are hosting the session, these sessions, these webinars to help teams who've had to suddenly pivot to working remotely, get up to speed and to do so effectively. So today and on Friday, we will talk about what to do in order to build a productive and trusting remote culture where people connect and where teamwork blossoms. I would like to share a short story with you about going remote about more than a year ago. Um, uh, as you see there on the photo that was during one of our strategic sessions back when we would, could still have people uh, together and uh, being very close to one another at a beautiful uh, location here in Curacao. I convinced my team of 12 back then to give up our office space and to move to working fully remote. Uh, as I said, that picture was taken on that day uh, when they all agreed because I said I would only do this experiment if everyone in the team agrees to that, that this could work. And we all thought it was very scary at first, to be honest, but we, uh, the reason why we did it is that it was a preemptive move for us to lower cost, as we were seeing increasing uncertainties in terms of our economy, which was already in a not so great shape uh, about a year ago. Uh, and we wanted to be agile in that regard. Uh, so we took on the experiment and guess what happened? Uh, we had a tremendous year. We had a great year. Uh, I can't say that uh, we suffered. I think our team is uh, better connected, more aligned than we have ever been before. And that is to say that I can attest that for, in our case, remote work really works. Um, but for you, maybe the story is a bit different. Uh, somewhere mid-March, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, maybe you've had to move to remote working overnight uh, with many unanswered questions. For you, maybe it was, would it even work? Uh, you would feel overwhelmed by the volume of communication. In my case, I even experienced that. The, the many phone calls, the emails, the virtual meetings. And you might be basically wondering how you find the time to get all the work done if the whole time you're trying to stay connected with everyone. You may also find it hard to give feedback to your team since you're no longer sharing a space. I mean, something that is very common to us in our cultures is that we you know walk to walk up to one another and have a chat now that option is not there at least not physically so maybe you are struggling a bit with that or also another struggle and this is personally something that i struggled with is uh to to find time or to find it even hard to turn off at the end of the day to disconnect as you have no clear distinction between, between home and work. It's, it's basically happening in pretty much the same space. So as a manager or as an employee, probably your first thoughts were about what tools you need in this new workspace. Huh? Uh, whenever something changes, the, the, the first thing we tend to think on is what tools do we need? And I've seen quite some, I mean, and I must also say terrific webinars and sessions these past days on people sharing what tools they're using, many people jumping onto 
to, to tools like Slack or Microsoft Teams, uh, the whole uh, issue surrounding uh, Zoom security, for instance, and how they're trying to beefen, beefen it up uh, to make it safe for us to use. And hopefully by now you're more or less making it work with what, with what you have. And then uh, Alamika and I thought maybe next on your journey is to think about how you built a productive remote working culture and how you connect with colleagues now that you have uh, the reality that you have. So basically uh, by the end of Friday, we hope to get you there in this curve of continuous changes where you hopefully by the end of uh, Friday or by Friday, are able to answer the question of how you could make this uh, productive uh, for you and for your team. Um, and then hopefully making it happen within your company and sometime down the road being able to say that you were able to get to a new and a better normal that includes maybe fully working fully remote or having people uh, shift between working in the office a couple of days in the week and then spending some days at home working from home given the measures to keep a safe distance and to avoid uh, too much uh, agglomeration of people. So what's the focus of today? I would like, I am going to be talking about principles, principles uh, to consider uh, when working remotely. And then I'm going to dive into the culture and the processes that we have found that worked for us at DNI. Then I have a small surprise for you. I really hope it, that it is something that can add value to, do, to you. And as I said, we will be finishing off the session this morning with a, with a Q&A session. So feel free to add uh, your questions in uh, during the session. Just checking in, Gedeon, how are we doing? Do we have some questions that might need immediate answer uh, so far? Um, I will, sorry, um, Daniel and Gideon. Uh, there is one question um, which I um, already saw. But I'm sure you will cover that uh, later on, Daniel. And um, it's an anonymous question about how can you, after all, after all the financial cuts uh, we're taking, still connect on a personal level with your team. Uh, so I guess that's something we, um, yeah. we get back to, right? Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Alimika. That's definitely something we're going to get uh, into it okay. this morning uh, during the session. So guys, uh, some food for thought. Huh? Uh, this is something I wanted to share with you. Remote work is a cultural change. It's not a change of format. Uh, in saying this, uh, basically it's thinking about what is your company culture around remote working versus just saying that we changed the way we work and that we're going to do exactly the same things the way we've always done. Because we see, or I see quite some risks in that. Uh, now is the time to decide what culture you want to involve into. Uh, these are crisis times, but as, they, as the time is as it is, I also believe that is the best time for you to think about it and to consider um, how you can make it work for you. Because if, if you don't, uh, there's a chance that you might uh, unintentionally uh, see some behaviors or not address some behaviors that have been there and possibly not the most productive or effective ones in your company. And that, that might even become toxic, given that you now have even less chance to meet each other in person, adding an additional barrier maybe to your, to your communication. So hopefully uh, when talking about principles and cultural elements and processes today, we're able to contribute to your journey. I will not specifically dive into details of tools, as I see there are many uh, available, uh, many that is available out there, but should you, have a, should you have a question about those, I would be happy to share uh, some of the tools that we use um, here at DNI. Um, and in saying this, I do not think that remote working is a temporary solution to face our current reality. I see it as an entirely different approach to getting things done and organize your business. So, uh, in saying that, let's look at some of the principles, the mantras we'd like to call them at DNI um, to help foster a thriving culture, notwithstanding the fact that we're working uh, socially distanced from one another. And the first one, and, and, and I think I also believe the most important one is to not to leave anyone behind. Uh, being left behind could be very demotivating and it means that you're less equipped to give input. Uh, people can easily fall in the trap that because they're home, 
feeling that feeling a bit disconnected from the reality of work you may not have a dedicated space where you enter and then your mindset shifts to being this is work mode it requires a bit more discipline for you to do but i believe that as team members and as managers we all have a role to make sure that we get everyone and keep everyone involved in what we do and some of the things that i believe that are crucial uh, to do is to communicate all key decisions from team sessions or any decision you make by publishing these notes or by making it known to everyone there is no need to organize a meeting to give uh, to do all participations but find a place where you could share your key decisions and whenever possible and in my opinion wherever possible and you should try to for try for it to always be that case to involve people in your decision making processes uh, it was horrible to see about a week ago how a company in the U.S., which is a provider of uh, on-demand scooter rentals in the States, they called uh, all of their 400, well, they called 400 of their 1,600 employees into a 30-minute Zoom meeting. And when the Zoom meeting started, all screens were turned off and they, would, they were not able to see anyone. And a tape started playing with the voice of the executive assistant to the CEO. And it lasted for two minutes and the thing, and what she said was, um, unfortunately, because of this uh, very difficult situation, we are having to make very difficult decisions and we have decided that we need to let you go, let go of you. Um, all, you will be now receiving an email with all the details for your severance pay. We're sorry for this and thank you for attending the meeting. Um, please follow up via email. I mean, the most inhumane way possible to make such a difficult decision. That is not what I'm saying that you need to do. I think there are definitely some decisions you need to have very personal. In this case, eye to eye via screen, maybe contact, but try to make a space to communicate. Whenever possible, record video sessions and make them available so that if there's anyone in your team that wasn't able to attend one of your meetings, could always go back and look. Um, one of the practices that we have that whenever we have a meeting with DNI with a team, we try and make sure that everyone has their video turned on. It doesn't matter if you're having a bad hair day. We all have uh, those uh, these days. Uh, it doesn't matter that you can't change to a, to a virtual background. I, I think there's beauty in, beauty in it even to getting to know people on a more personal side um, um, these days, which become more valuable uh, in the future. And uh, whenever possible, also try to uh, do what I call long form writing. Uh, instead of calling everyone for a meeting. There is a very, we're very much used in our culture to have synchronous communication. That being, I would like to be talking to you and getting feedback right away. That's the warmth that we have in our culture. Then again, it's also partially very ineffective because it takes time away from everyone. So one practice that has worked very well from us is to, to writing things out, writing ideas out, sharing a document and giving people the option to, to give feedback. What shouldn't you do? Uh, whenever you're in a meeting and it's quiet, don't assume people are following. It sounds stupid, but way too often we assume people are following just because they aren't complaining or because they aren't reacting actively make sure that you're doing that. Zoom has some quite terrific features. Microsoft Teams as well, where people can use reactions and thumbs up and whatnot to make sure that they are following and they are feeling that they are part of the discussion. Anything you'd like to add here, Elemike? Yes, <laughs> um, about uh, communication and uh, practice what you preach is um, also maybe a good idea to ask the audience to, um, um, again, to ask questions anytime you want when you hear something you would like to, um, to ask to know more about. But I would like to add uh, two things on the communication um, with respect to leave no one behind. As exactly what you say, uh, Daniel, if it's silent at the other side, um, that's uh, not necessarily a way um, that people are following you. So try to keep on asking questions and making it interactive. And for lots of people, remote working is not uh, a day, a daily business. So for lots of people, it's, it's, it's scary. It's, it's, um, it's not, uh, it's out, way out of the comfort zone. So keep on asking questions and keep on engaging with everyone. So that is, um, I think, um, something very important to, uh, to keep in mind. 
All right, thank you. Let's uh, jump into the next mantra. Trust the people and trust the process. But more important, trust the people. Uh, here, uh, how do you, as a remote manager, if I may call it that way, know that your people are working? And uh, with our clients, this is an, this is an everlasting, interesting, uh, nonetheless, conversation about how you make sure that your people are actually getting the work done. Uh, three things uh, briefly. I think it's crucial for you to get to know each other since the more you know your people, the more you trust them. And now more than ever, I think it is important for you to, to really get to know people on a bit more personal level even. I joined a webinar with some of our international partners uh, two weeks ago. And the first thing uh, one, of my, uh, one of the ladies said was, um, I have a toddler. And so probably in the next 20 minutes, she's going to go enter into this room and make some weird, strange noises. Don't worry. I mean, it makes fun. People laugh at it. And we actually, I think this is a great opportunity for us to humanize the workplace and to not see and work as a different aspect of life, but to get to more work-life harmony, something we will get into it later. So if you use Microsoft Teams, if you use Slack or whatever, or WhatsApp, even create channels and means for people to socialize uh, virtually. I'm going to give you some examples on this later on. The second thing is to focus on output and not on the time in seat. And I know this is a very difficult and hard one for people to realize and to get used to. We are very much used to having the prick clock or people clocking in and clocking out because the way we measure productivity, and not just in Curacao, but in most places around the world is by the number of hours put in. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that's a broken way of measuring productivity. You could have someone getting into the office, spending the whole day doing nothing, and still in your metrics, they're tracking as productive because they were present for eight, uh, for eight hours to stay. Now it's very difficult for you to do this. And um, that's why it's more important for you to hold employees accountable for the work they do, not for the hours they work. Um, this is something that I personally struggled with. We have uh, tools in place where you could actually have people register the hours they work. It's quite tedious, um, but in our business, sometimes it's needed because some of the contracts are contracts on billables and you need to be able to show the client that you actually put in the work. But that's also the only reason why we track time. You need to design, and that's why I also said earlier that remote working is not a temporary solution or something you do uh, just in addition to what you're doing. It's a different way of working. And this is exactly one of the reasons why, because it makes you think very clearly about the role every team member in your team has and how you measure their productivity in terms of output. How many client calls did they answer? How many client requests did they get? How many proposals did they get out? How many, um, you know, you could think of a thousand and one metrics where you can measure the productivity. And you might even be surprised that they attain their targets without working 40 hours. Then maybe topic for a different conversation, but um, change your focus to hours work and make it to the output. I'm happy to share thoughts with you later in the Q&A about this. One of the questions that we received was indeed, how do you make sure that um, 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 you could check productivity. There, there are a couple of things uh, you could do there. As I said, having the right metrics in place is definitely one. So easily uh, take the job descriptions you have and to all the tasks or the roles you have in the job description, look at what metrics you could uh, design or you could use and how you're going to keep track of the metric. Otherwise, it's, it's an impossible task. It's also you could do together with your colleague. I think they'd be happy to give input into how they would like to measure their own productivity. Um, and there are other tools. One of them is uh, one that I use personally. It's called Rescue Time. And it's a tool that you install the com in the computer. And based on the settings and the customization you make, you're able to, at every day, it calculate your productivity score. And then you agree with your colleagues at what level you would like that productivity score to be. And it's a very intelligent software that helps you even if, you, if you're distracted, it, you could even uh, add alerts to save and you've been spending too much time today on Facebook, I'm going to block it for the next hour. Those are all things you could do. Beware of using other types of software like intrusive ones because I know that they are there and they are growing tremendously. One of which I saw uh, this week 
uh, yesterday, to be, to, be, to be honest, is a tool that you install on your uh, colleagues' computers and randomly it takes screenshot of what they're doing. I think that's the worst thing you could do because it's total invasion of privacy. Um, I would just recommend you, I would not recommend you to use those tools, but look at those and trust your people. It's, it's difficult, it's a learning cr uh, curve, but um, you gain trust by trusting others. Um, and whenever you can automa aut automate rudimentary workflows, uh, and what do I mean by this? Having workflows in place, uh, and meaning how you shift from one work from one person to one other, what to another, uh, there are many tools to help you in this automation. And that saves you because you're all working digitally, that saves you significant amount of time in the end with even the small tasks. Anything else uh, here uh, you would like to add, Alamika? Yes, about um, uh, the trust, um, you know, um, it's not about, like you said, about a corona crisis um, um, we're talking about now, uh, with or without a pandemic. Uh, trust is the, f is, is the fundamental thing on which an organization um, of any kind is built. And tr you cannot build trust overnight. So if in your organization uh, you had a problem um, with trust before this, then um, yeah, you can. Uh, it, it it will be a challenge for you right now because um, you can only uh, even be more successful or or survive all this um, when you can let go and and trust uh, yeah. your employees, your colleagues, your 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 team members, and that's um, about letting go and also um, be vulnerable. Uh, be honest if you don't know yeah. uh, something um, um, like me struggling here with I'm not I'm not used to that zoom tool still uh, acting um, uh, using it actively and I can learn a lot from from yeah. from Daniel and you know um, trust is about open communication about um, sharing your concerns and your um, worries and your questions and also if you are in a leading position in your organization um, please be aware of uh, always yeah be, yeah be open motivate your team to um, uh, to put forward questions and fears yeah. and and concerns and trust building trust is a as a long process and um, most successful companies and organizations in the world they have built a culture in which there is trust and um, and that's a, a really a very important condition um, uh, which you need to survive um, as an organization anyhow without with or without pandemic yeah yeah thanks Alamika. indeed i think you used the keyword right there it's, it's vulnerability and as you said, it might be a challenge, but I think it's also a beautiful opportunity for us to, to learn a bit more uh, about that and to just trust also a bit more. You might be surprised uh, in the result. Yeah. The next mantra, working alone together. I think this is a beautiful one um, because you need, we believe in principle that you need to find ways to build community and connection, even when physically apart. This comes to the core of our team uh, this morning. But how do you do that? Uh, you know, how do you do it? I uh, use weekly video check-ins. And when I say video check-in, I mean with the camera turned on. Um, I, I, I know that it might be challenging for some to have, um, uh, to have the right tools. Maybe not everyone in your team has the right uh, bandwidth for internet connection. Uh, we have some challenges, uh, I must say, uh, these, uh, these days with some of our team members. But whenever possible, try to do it try to have that weekly check-in, just similar to what we did earlier this morning, having people share what's on their mind. And you'll probably see that the first time you do it, uh, they might be a bit hesitant, or they, they might be a bit even superficial or not going too much into, into the details of what they're actually feeling. But after having more than uh, 100 uh, check-ins with my team, uh, you'll grow stronger and you'll, I mean, people will see the benefit in doing this. And the more you do it, the more you're going to get out of it. Uh, people will feel more comfortable within the team environment to share what they're actually thinking and feeling. Uh, we've even had check-ins where we were all crying over the video. Uh, that's how beautiful this can get to be and how powerful of exercise it is. It might sound simple, it sounds stupid, but I think 
the simpler things are the one and very often the ones that, that bring us the most uh, the most value added as you are uh, not sharing the same space uh, consciously take time to celebrate accomplishments uh, people need to have the positive reinforcement uh, no more than ever uh, send shout outs uh, or kudos like we say or, or show gratitude to team members you know whenever something someone gets thing get something done it might seem simple um, and I'm from a millennial generation where we are used to getting positive free, uh, praise for just showing up basically um, maybe that's a bit in the extreme but take time to, to celebrate those accomplishments uh, because it really uh, affects the, the energy level in your team um, and it keeps everyone connected to one another I'll also share uh, more about this later and when we talk about culture and process and create moments for personal peer-to-peer -peer conversations. It's now, uh, I mean, it's something even if you didn't do it before, and now is definitely the time to pick it up. I have a one-on-one -on -one call uh, once a month or once every two weeks. Uh, call it maybe a, a virtual coffee time, you know. If, if we have the, have the two of you, if you're doing it with a colleague, uh, take, uh, take some coffee and have an easy talk or do something like a water cooler conversations. We tend to, underestimate the power of these conversations, small talk, uh, I would say. And my colleagues would always say, you also need to make sure that you have time para educare. And I do not mean to say that in a negative way, but small talk is how we've built societies, to be very honest. And you need to create a space for those conversations to continue happening. And Amika, as I'm going more into detail about this later, I'm going to go to the next sheet, if that's okay with you. Yeah. Okay, sure. And then uh, a fifth uh, mantra, uh, diversity matters. Uh, and you might see I'm all talking about inclusion and diversity here, but I do think those are the main elements that generate and create trust even, uh, create the necessary conditions for remote working to work for you. Uh, don't lose sight of the fact that not everyone absorbs information in the same way. Everyone learns differently and they get work done differently as well. And now, uh, because everyone is in a different environment, you will see it more than ever happening. So use different cues to make work engaging. Uh, don't stick to just the, 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 the Zoom meeting. Think about using colors, uh, use presentations, share your screen whenever possible. Uh, most people are visual learners uh, and they comprehend much more if something is visual. So whenever you can do that, uh, have live design sessions. Uh, in Zoom, there's a feature, you could open a whiteboard, have people put their ideas. There are tools like Mural or Miro you could use while people can actually drag and drop sticky notes. You could have a joint brainstorming sessions because those are powerful tools to keep the brains active and working and keep the brains connected, even though they are physically distanced. And take time to learn how your team members work best uh, in order to cater to their needs. I would like to connect this to what I said earlier about uh, having those one-on-one -on -one conversations. They shouldn't be about work. They should be about work experience, how they are experiencing work. And make it a question to ask people in, in the sessions that um, uh, what works best for you? Maybe we're colleagues for 10 years, but now I would like to ask you, what works for you? Do you like for me to send you emails? Do you like for me to text you? Uh, uh, what works for you? And then make agreements, even um, individually, but as well as with your team and document these agreements um, uh, to, to define new ways of working. And it's always experimenting and trying out uh, new things. And uh, last but not least, uh, it's only something I alluded to earlier, resort to asynchronous communication. As I said, it's important for you to empower independence. And with independence, I do not mean to have people disconnected from the team, but make sure that they have the right time or the, the enough time to put it that way, so that they can do their work, have their tasks completed, and that they can work independently from whomever executed. So basically work needs to be able to happen independently. Um, we are very much used to the concept of management by walking around, eh? where the one that holds all the information and that stitches everything together is the manager, supervisor, or director. Unfortunately, I have bad news for you. In remote working environments, two things might happen. You will fail as a business or you will suffer immensely from health problems. 
because you cannot keep doing that within a remote team. So it's very essential for you to um, delegate the work and have people work independently. One um, crucial belief that we have um, in our DNI uh, that I try, and it might not always be the most positive, but it works for us, is that I'd rather have my team members ask me for forgiveness than to ask me for permission. Um, asking people for, ask, always having to ask for permission to do something makes you dependent on someone else. And would, you do not like want to have that. So make sure you create an environment and do that so that people can pick up things, take initiative and do the work. This is one of the, to be honest, one of the harder parts in remote working. Um, and how do you do that? Establish guidelines, huh? establish guidelines as to how you can work together. When are you going to have those meetings together? or where you're all connected at the same time, and also um, how you're going to work asynchronously. One of the things that we do at DNI is that we have a shared, everyone is on a Google calendar and everyone's calendar is shared with everyone. And every week people block times where we call focus time. So I know that maybe uh, Tuesday from 10 to 12, one of my colleagues is on focus time, so I will not call or disturb. And we also make sure that we even have shared focus time. So we all have a feeling at least that everyone is doing their thing on their own. It, it creates a feeling of being alone together, huh? as I said earlier. Um, default uh, to action, whenever pause. So as I said, if you have to think too much, there's something wrong. Do something and then ask for feedback. And then whenever you do that, make sure that you create those effective feedback loops. Um, agree on how feedback uh, should work. Are we going to send a document via email and people get two days to give feedback or one day, or do you give feedback in a joint call? Create some uh, guidelines for you to work. We make use of uh, forms, survey questions uh, that uh, we ask our employees and colleagues to, to complete in order to give feedback on work that we do for our clients. I feel that there's something you'd like to add here, uh, Elamika? Uh, sorry, I was um, um, a bit distracted uh, looking back into the chat on uh, mm -hmm. where we can connect to the people who are uh, listening and looking to mm -hmm. us. And um, so um, if it's okay with you, I would like to get back to the question of uh, Alet, which he uh, posted, but mm -hmm. uh, not before I let you finish with this. Sure. Uh, so this is, this is, I mean, the part about mantras. Next, we will be going into the culture part. So maybe it's a good time for us to actually yeah. get to a last question. Uh, for our other participant, a last, uh, you mean that she was thinking about the guidelines huh, for her team to create? Is that the question you're referring to? Yes, uh, that's. Anamika? Yes, so, that's appeal to, appealing to me because um, I, th I think, um, well, Alette is um, um, running a, a hotel business and uh, yeah. when everything shuts down, then uh, you have like um, a challenge, uh, I mm -hmm. can imagine. So her question is about um, thinking, of, yeah, she would like to think of guidelines for her team to create inspiring updates for their home offices to our social followers. So if yeah. I understand it well, is, um, is um, the question is about how can we um, add content uh, to uh, valuable content for our social followers uh, while uh, running a hotel from our home, which is empty. <laughs> so yeah. um, I guess that's, that's really, uh, yeah. Cool question because uh, first of all, uh, there's no operation, uh, daily operation to run, and secondly, so how are you going to add value yeah. Uh, yeah. from your home if you're working in an hotel yeah. uh, to your uh, to your social uh, yeah. followers? And yeah. if I, um, with your permission, um, can uh, try to give a part of that answer, and please add um, add me mm -hmm. in that is um, I think this would be the uh, ideal uh, moment to do something like uh, backstage, uh, uh, going backstage of the, uh, of the hotel. Normally you would uh, maybe post uh, all kind of uh, nice um, content on the operation in your hotel and your product and your, and your service. But uh, uh, yeah, this is the time that you can zoom and tune into the people, the, the people who run 
uh, your hotel, the people, your team, which is responsible for your success. And, yeah. you know, you can, we can all show uh, pictures of, of sun and, and, and sea and also of our uh, different propositions and um, uh, yeah. of our different hotels. But in the end, it's about our team, our human capital, our team members, our colleagues are making the difference. So I would see this as a perfect opportunity to tune in to your team and tune into your talents and um, yeah, and give, give every team member the exposure he or she um, uh, deserves. Yeah, uh, awesome feedback, Alemike. And I think uh, this is also the time to try out new and, and weird and strange and awkward things. Uh, to give you an example, uh, one of the things that we did, we had uh, during one of our weekly meetings, we had everyone play virtual tic-tac-toe. So you go one to three and people need to do the tick. Or, or, or create and then you make photos. Uh, people are looking at those. Something else you could try and think, uh, to give an example, two we, uh, a week ago, I believe, two we, also a business that is basically shut down currently, had um, people participate and their, their colleagues even, the home away, uh, what is it? The stay at home challenge. That is where, this is where they ask all the colleagues who also enjoy going on vacation, of course, to take one of your favorite vacation uh, images and recreate it within your home environment and put those two pictures together, hashtag uh, st uh, stay home challenge. Uh, there are many quizzes you could create and share with your members. This yeah. is with your followers. You could uh, let maybe, I think, definitely in terms of your, uh, your, your, uh, the, the beautiful work that you do, um, at your organization, get people into the details of how it works. Uh, have a quiz where people could actually uh, answer the questions or have your colleagues tell about their experiences or their wonderful memories at work. One of the very powerful things I believe that we can tap into um, these times is reminiscing. Uh, there is great power in looking back at happy memories. Um, and that is not to make you sad. It's proven that uh, looking back at memories releases the happy chemicals, serotonin, oxytocin, and so forth. And uh, have people look back at those moments um, and they bring a minute of joy into, into their lives. So I hope uh, we've uh, answered our uh, last question. Uh, let's continue briefly in the presentation and along the way we're going to get into the other questions and comment. Thank you for the interaction. We're getting quite some feedback in the chat. I really appreciate that. And Daye, uh, I know you asked about uh, more interactive tools and apps. I will get, uh, I will answer your question as well uh, later in the presentation. Culture. Um, I am not going to tell you that there, there is uh, one size fit all. Definitely not. Every organization is unique. Um, and every organization needs to make the time to decide what they want to be and how they want to be, what they want to be. Um, for us at DNI, there are a couple of things that have worked, that we have designed. They're always changing. So I'm sharing with you uh, the backstory, how actually we try to build our culture uh, and what the pillars of those culture are and what we do to connect to those uh, pillars. And they might be of inspiration to you. And if you have other ideas, uh, put them in the chat and be happy to talk to you about those as well. For us, very important is for our colleagues to feel fulfilled. And I think that counts for everyone. Uh, any HR questionnaire you could have uh, see or the report of HR trends you see lately, uh, see that people uh, consider fulfillment to be more important than salary, salary levels. Obviously, those two things are correlated to one another, but fulfillment is important. People need to know or need to feel that the work they do contributes to something bigger and that brings not just satisfaction, but fulfillment to them, um, which is, might be a challenge in a remote environment because um, it could be lonely. You're alone at home. It could be unmotivating or demotivating, and it could be even difficult depending on the environment you have uh, at home. How do you go about it? How we go about it? And if you have other ideas or tips for me, I'm, I'm always learning and, and taking on new things. Is to take on the role as a coach. And don't think that because coaches need to have a, a higher hierarchical position. Definitely not. Something that works great at DNI is peer-to-peer -peer coaching even. So coach rather than manage team, team members. As I said earlier, have those one-on-one, -on -one, uh, regular one-on-one -on -one conversations 
I am going to give you, uh, and a little surprise later on, you're going to see some of the things that um, really get into the details of this, but have those one-on-one -on -one and consider them to be time for personal development and learning. So as I said, it's a meeting about work, not a meeting, sorry, it's not a meeting about work. Um, so the intention of the meeting is not to ask, uh, hey, John, um, how are you doing with the proposal for X client? Or, hey, John, um, how is it going with the bookings and or cancellations? That's not the time for that meeting. Uh, the one-on-one -on -one is time to ask questions about the work experience. How are you feeling? Uh, what is making you happy? What is frustrating you from your work? Where are you getting the most satisfaction? Where do you have energy drains? Uh, there's a list of a thousand questions that in a link that I share with you, you'd be able to find and you could pick and choose um, from those meetings. They require very little uh, preparation, but you'll see that these might at the end of the day, if there's one thing I can say that made it work for us is the fact that we build relationships through those one of one. So if there's just one thing you want to do, I, I, I highly recommend uh, for you to make it uh, this one. And secondly, uh, which uh, I hope doesn't turn too technical, is to define objectives and key results and follow through on a regular basis through updates and retrospectives. Some big words uh, in there may be, but you have a strategy most likely as a company. Uh, in remote working, if you really wanna be able to keep people accountable, you need to be able to translate that strategy into smaller bits and pieces. The way we do it is through a technique or through a methodology called objectives and key results. And they are there for 90 days. So we establish at the beginning of Jan at, the, in the, at the end of December, at the end of March, at the end of uh, each quarter, we add or we agree on together with the whole team on the objectives and key results for the next quarter. And then during our weekly meetings, everybody reports on their objectives and key results. So everyone in the team members carry an ultimate responsibility or is accountable to one or more OKRs. Um, I'm going to share a tool with you later on and when you get onto the website, you will be getting a guide with all the details of how to introduce OKRs in your company should you be interested in doing so. Um, because this is also one of the more powerful elements uh, to making this work. Can I add something, Daniel? Sure, go ahead. Um, yes, your organization is... Um... Um, already far ahead, I guess, on uh, on performance. Um, but I think it's uh, good to uh, address um, maybe to others and other organizations who are still in the process of a functioneren and beoordelingsgesprek uh, twice a year. Your, when your performance cycle is is still like that, um, it's now it's the time because um, well you can find lots of information and we can provide that too on uh, how ineffective that process is. You cannot get away with, um, with your um, performance appraisals twice a year. It's, it's really about communicating with each other much more in one-on-ones, in, in monthly meetings or whatever uh, you um, change to make sure you uh, stay connected and you um, really motivate your, um, your engagement. And um, yeah, I think we uh, have to be honest in, um, in, in how, how yeah. Curacao looks like and also the other Caribbean islands. There are still many, many organizations in this very traditional uh, performance cycle. And uh, guys, it's now it's, it's the time. So uh, whenever uh, you are opening up, whenever your business is, is starting again, make sure that um, one of the, the things you change um, is your performance cycle because you have yeah. time for that now. I think indeed, uh, as you said, uh, in all honesty, like you said, performance cycle, the way we, we, are no, we are used to it is a thing of the past. We do not have that uh, performance cycle in the company. Yeah. I think uh, happy to be sharing more in a, in a separate session uh, with our audience, uh, should they be interested uh, yeah. in learning more about this. Uh, culture of appreciation, uh, very important uh, uh, to me personally and, and to our company. Um, being isolated and uh, communicating. If you see me looking on the side, it's because I have the presentation on a separate side. It's not that I'm looking at anything else. I'm very much focused on, on giving you the best uh, of what I can. So I'm, I hope I'm doing a good job so far. 
uh, together with Alemika. Let me know if we're going uh, too slow, um, then say uh, go faster. If not, if I'm too fast, say go slower and I, I'll happily adjust. As I was saying, uh, being isolated and communicating online can mean that you are less likely to celebrate the wins. This is something I already spoke a bit about. Um, but how do, you, how do you show that appreciation, even through virtual screens? Um, we use Slack uh, in our company uh, for quite some years already. And we have a special dedicated Slack channel where we publicly, leaders and team members, uh, recognize those who deserve it. Uh, we make use of a tool called uh, Bonusly. And everyone gets uh, uh, allocated, I think it's 250 bonus points every week and you have to use them. Um, and uh, you can give them away based on our company values, uh, based on these mantras and how you see our colleagues uh, perform. You could give them bonus points and they could then use those bonus points to uh, buy a gift card at Rituals, to get a massage at uh, 8 Experience or to buy an Amazon gift card, an iTunes gift card, a Spotify gift card. I mean, there is an ample amount of options. Um, this tool is, I believe, one of the tools that really, uh, they, they, it also makes a difference in the company. Uh, definitely, uh, it's not an expensive tool to use. Uh, it does require you to have a bit of a, it could be a small budget for, for those small bonuses, but they are, they bring great satisfaction and uh, team members really pre feel appreciated, especially if they get uh, bonuses from people they do not uh, expect. Uh, when I first presented this to one of our clients uh, two years ago, uh, my client told me, but don't you think that colleagues are going to make, uh, I, I'm going to say it in, the, in, in Dutch, exactly the way he said it. Denk je niet dat ze onderlinge afspraken gaan maken van jij geeft mij tien punten en ik geef jou tien. So don't you think they're going to make uh, agreements one another that you're going to give me ten and the other going to give me ten. No, not. Why not? Because the only way you can give bonus is you need to give a very good argument. You know, well, not a very good because there's no one to judge. But you need to add an argument or explain why you're giving a bonus and you need to attach it to a value and the system is smart enough to tell you that uh, you know uh, Daniel has been giving uh, a bit more than average bonus to to Elamika you may want to look into it the system tells you so there are ways to go about it and again trust your people before trying to uh, put uh, restraints in place uh, and this is what uh, we call the peer-to-peer -peer reward uh, system and also, um, and I saw someone commenting about spirituality here, very interesting. We're not going to go into the details, but I'm going to lean a bit into it, is uh, to conduct gratitude exercises where your team can share what they're grateful for on a personal level, on a professional level, or, or even otherwise. Um, that also, uh, that creates not just personal appreciation, but appreciation to everything that we're going through even in these harsh times there are things for us to appreciate i think i for ex I, me for example i'm very appreciative and i'm very grateful for the opportunity that chata is giving us all to stay connected and to maybe learn and share with one another just to name uh, an example work-life harmony we talk very often about work-life balance um, I do not like to talk about balance. I much rather call it harmony. Why? Um, balance, uh, in saying balance, it means for something to be in balance, it need to have the similar amount of weights uh, on both sides. Huh? If, you have a, if you have a scale uh, and you want to balance, they, the, the things need to add up to the same weight, otherwise your scale will be out of balance. If you translate that to, to work and life, you cannot, um, and it's, uh, it's something that we have... Uh, created for us to believe in, but you cannot divide yourself in two. You cannot give 50% of yourself at work and 50% of yourself at home and still perform. It doesn't, it doesn't work. Um, what could work is maybe trying to harmonize those two things. There are times when your family requires a bit more of you. And there are times when maybe your company requires a bit more of you. And this is a, an interesting personal development exercise, I think, for all, is to find a way to harmonize those two with one another and being open and having the right culture when people can actually say, you know, this week um, uh, I have my kids at home. I will be somewhat distracted because I need to help them with their schoolwork. 
um, that also requires for you. And I, I know that if I, I don't give my team members that space, they won't perform anyways. Um, so be open about it and, and have people and, and help people harmonize those two things. Very interesting thing to talk about, for example, doing your, your one-on-ones. Uh, routine is very important. So uh, you don't have a commute time these days. Your commute might be from the bed to the bedroom, to the kitchen, to the office space, and you keep circling throughout the day. But instead of uh, the, the additional time you have uh, to commute, the, now that you don't have to commute, don't sleep in. Use the time for some personal development. Do some reading. Uh, listen to some podcasts. Watch some interesting YouTube uh, videos. Yesterday, I was following an interview with Robert Kiyosaki, and he was saying that the best teachers are on YouTube. They are no longer in school. So make use of that um, as your uh, commute time as it helps you transition between work and, and, and office and back, home and work, sorry, and back. And uh, I mean, I keep repeating it because it's never enough. Conduct a brief daily check in and check out with the team. What are you going to do today quickly? Um, uh, you could do it synchronously, but with DNI, as I said, we do it asynchronously. So in our Slack channel, we have a bot, it's called Standuply. And uh, every morning at 8.30, automatically it sends a message to all team members and they need to answer three questions. What have you done yesterday? What are you going to do today? And what obstacles are you facing? And uh, you answer the question, everybody needs to answer the question before uh, 9.30. And then at 9.30, it sends out the report to everyone and everyone knows what everyone is doing. Simple, but extremely powerful exercise. You wanna know, you wanna know what your team is working on? introduce this daily virtual stand-up in your team. It may, great, it may it will go, it's going to make a big difference uh, in your team. I mean, I even saw some colleagues these days, uh, some clients of us where unfortunately because of the situation, they cannot sing in their stand-up. Yeah, there's nothing I have to do planned for today. Give me work. Luxury position almost even to be in. People wanna be productive more than ever. Uh, most Daniel, people, I must say yes, Alamika. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it's already no, five. No. Uh, yes. Uh, sorry, uh, it's already time. Yeah. Um, and maybe it's it's a good idea to um, um, wrap it up and to to look into questions we can proceed with on yeah. Friday because um, uh, for all of you, I think it's good to know that I was the I'm the co-host now in yeah. Daniel's session, and Daniel is going to help. Uh, me out and support yeah. us in uh, our session on Friday. Yeah. Would it be yeah. um, a good idea to um, yeah. give the opportunity to yeah. our audience to ask questions on uh, what do you, what would you like us to proceed with? Yeah, I think that's wonderful. I, I'm going to wrap up. Thanks for the reminder for the time. Uh, just quickly, the other two were uh, about yes. learning and excellence and about uh, fun and celebration, which is also important. You're Absolutely. going to get the slides, you're going to get the presentations. Um, and so don't feel that you are missing out on anything. Alamika will happily um, go over these with you. So uh, indeed, uh, add your questions. Uh, we have uh, some minutes to get into those questions uh, and answer them wherever we can. Um, so I will before answering the question, just two things. And I, and the, the small surprise, I do not want to miss. We have something for you. Um, we have bundled everything that works for us uh, as a company with details, uh, not uh, like this, and a remote working playbook with do's and don'ts, uh, tools, links, and everything. Um, if you just uh, have your phone, you click on the, you, you scan the QR code, you get immediate access to this playbook. It's for free. Uh, and we will be continuously updating it. So if you felt something was not addressed today, I, I hope you could maybe get your answer in the playbook. Um, so that's one, um, uh, scan the QR code. Um, I can also send the link uh, with the email later on. And the second, uh, which might be interesting, um, this is for you, the first time we're launching it today. Uh, the only people who have seen this so far is our team members, uh, we're making it's freely available to everyone um, uh, in these times, is a website where you can find all the tools about how to communicate, how to collaborate, how to innovate, and how to build culture. Uh, working remotely or not, even when we go back in a situation where 
a part of your team, of most of your team is working in the office, there are all tools that can be handy for you. The link is reshapers.tools. We are launching, uh, we are adding new tools on a weekly basis. You do not have to sign up. You do not have to register. Just log in, click what you're looking for, and you can download instructions, uh, even with the worksheets in PDF. So everything I spoke about um, today, they are all on the website as well. So um, those interactive tools, there's a section on the website when you can look into the apps. So you could check them out. We are also telling you there how we use those apps. Um, the check-in, the agenda of the meeting cycle, the retrospectives, how you do OKRs, all of that um, is available uh, to you for free. I hope it contributes uh, to your journey. Sincerely, uh, we do it with much appreciation. We know that these are challenging times, so if there's anything we can do to lighten the burden, we are happy to do so, and this is one of the ways that we thought we could uh, add value to you um, during this time. Um, let's look uh, into, the, into the questions, uh, Alamika. Uh, the yes. anonymous question uh, we received. How can Absolutely. you, after, so let me uh, answer uh, live. Mm -hmm. How can you, after all the financial cuts we're taking, uh, still connect on a personal level with your team? How can we make sure that our team understands that it is our decisions are taken for long term and there is not personal? I hope I understand the question. I try, I'm going to try and answer. Alamika, feel free to add on to it. Um, over communicating. It sounds weird but I don't think there is any type of communication currently that is going to be too much um, expose yourself be vulnerable share your own fears um, that builds empathy and what we need more now more than ever is empathy and compassion and you can only create empathy and compassion if you are open and honest and if you actively listen um, I took on a challenge uh, these weeks to accept today because I'm hosting the webinar to, to listen more than I talk. Um, and maybe that has meant that in some of the meetings there were these awkward five minute silence mode, but you can also listen through the silence. So silence also speaks, if I may say that philosophically. But um, I do not really think that at this moment we can um, most decisions that we are taking, that we are going to take, of course, from a professional aspect, from a rational perspective, we have to do it. But at the same time, they're going to also be very emotional decision. It's a fact. Um, but you don't fear. We don't need to fear. Uh, 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 it depends a bit on maybe the trust level you have in your team or that you want to create. Have a try and, uh, how can I put this into words? A, a stare into the dark together. Uh, if we all think it's going to be terribly long, let's have a talk about how that looks like. Let's try and get all those feelings and thoughts out. What happens if by the end of May, we still don't have airlift? Have that conversation. Don't just answer it as a manager. Have that conversation with your team members. It's difficult. They're going to cry. You're going to cry. But it's very healing. It's a very healing part of the process as well because... When you do it, you realize afterwards that 80% of the times, it's not as bad as you have painted it to be. So that's, that's the personal contribution I can make in, in, in an attempt to answering this question. Alamika? Yes, um, Daniel, um, I totally agree. I mean, uh, you, you explained it very well, and I agree in the way that the start of this is sharing all your concerns and all your fears uh, together because we're in this together and that's where it all starts and when you start sharing what you feel um, I mean that's not uh, again it's not about um, uh, uh, corona I mean communicating is um, always um, about sharing your needs and exploring the needs of another person that's yeah. the basic rule in communication in times of crisis, that rule is even, even more relevant. It's even more yeah. important to stick to. Be open about your needs and explore the needs of your peers, your colleagues, yeah. your family, and, and be open and, and, and share whatever's, whatever is in your head. Same time, you will 
um, experience that when you start sharing your needs and your fears and whatever you you feel it's creating trust and the trust is the basis we need to continue and um, if you be able to yeah put yourself in a vulnerable position it will create trust and you will gain respect and that's that's where we should can start grow again and yeah. um the other question is um of course we're losing we're losing the positive spirits uh sometimes or maybe the whole day that's that's totally understandable but if you start the conversation in an honest way with sharing your feelings, then I'm sure you can swift to switch the conversation into um, looking into opportunities because this is not about when is this going to end? This is not the question you should ask. This, the question you should ask is how are we going to continue with this and what can we do? What, yeah. is, what is my talent? How can I contribute? What, what, how can I help? And um, uh, reflect to yourself and to your organization. Uh, what, what can I do? And if I yeah. cannot add value uh, in the position where I am now, uh, can I help somewhere else? Am I in tourism and am I without a job? Maybe I can, with all my, my service-minded uh, uh, skills, maybe I can um, uh, change and, 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 and go into some kind of, of medical assistance and, you know, think about yourself, reflect to yourself, contemplate and yeah. see what you still can do instead yeah. of what we cannot do. Yeah. And then that's the way to get out of this and to grow. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm going to come back to this when we wrap up with a, with a small reflection, or maybe I could do it now. And uh, many people are asking themselves, is everything going to be okay? And I think the answer to that question is always, it depends. Um, if you mean that by, is everybody, as if, is, if you mean uh, when asking that question, if what you actually want to know is, is everything going to be the way it was and the way you expected it to be? No, unfortunately not. It's not going to be the way it was and it's not going to be the way you expected it to be. Um, but if you say that, is everything going to be the way that it is going to be? Then yes, the answer is always going to be a yes. Um, everything is going to be the way that they are meant to going to be. And so you're actually you, just with a question that Alamika has, okay, so if that's the case, how, would you, um, how are we going to make it happen with what is going to be the way it is going to be? Um, the, the losing the positive spirit might also be a significance that you are in a grievance period. Most of us all are. Um, so some small practices, start a gratitude journal every day, morning or evening, before you get out of bed or before you do anything. Write down three things you're grateful for. I'm grateful that I woke up to another day. I'm grateful that the sun is shining. I'm grateful that we have fresh air. I'm grateful that Chata organizes at Home Academy. I'm grateful that um, I have come so far in my life. I mean, there are a thousand and one things for us to be grateful for. It puts you in a mindset of building up your own self-confidence if you feel that that's dropping. Have conversations with other people just for the sake of talking to them about your grievances. And I, I also get the negative calls, people that are angry, that are worrying. I see a, a big habit growing now. People are locked on their television and on social media to get the latest status updates on, on Corona and the pandemic globally. Be careful what you consume. It affects you unconsciously. Read the news, know what happens, but don't overread the news. Don't get too much into it. That can also affect your well-being. Or if you do it a lot, also offset it with doing positive practices. Maybe try, uh, try meditation. Has worked wonderfully for me in the past, in the past years. Another question, in, team of, in a team of 24 employees working in three different teams and have weekly digital meetings within their teams, how can I connect to all of them and feel connected? Um, a couple of questions right there. I'm going to try and answer it quickly. You have 24 people in your team. Are you the only leader? Are there other leaders in the team? Uh, can you share, uh, again, have those one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations uh, once a month? If you have to do 24, I know it's going to be a lot. I'm not talking about two-hour meetings. Most one-on-one -on -one conversations take about 30 to 40 minutes. Some take 20. 
um, minutes. So do that. It creates a way for you to feel connected. Ask your people to stay connected with one another. Um, organize social happy hours. That was one of the bullets we didn't get uh, into very much. Uh, once a month, we used to have our social gathering as a team. Would have been uh, in the way uh, things were before. Uh, we would uh, go somewhere together. Nowadays, it's uh, hop on a, a Zoom chat, maybe play, what's the, the game called? A house party together or look at other challenges. There are virtual team building programs you could look into yeah. um, nowadays if you have the budget for it. Um, or just connect and talk. Um, last week, for example, uh, one of my colleagues hosted a snack and learn session. Everyone had to prepare a snack. Uh, present it, show it to the others, and she gave a talk about mental health and mental well-being. Powerful way to connect the whole team together on a common team. Not necessarily working related, but we can all benefit from those type of sessions. I hope to have answered the question. And the other question we have is from Andaye. Um, Andaye was saying, can you please recommend more interactive tools? So Andaye, I'm going to briefly share with you what the tools are that we use uh, at, at DNI. For instant messaging, we use uh, Slack, as I said. For video conferencing, we use Google Meet and Zoom when needed. We use Google Meet mostly for our internal meetings as we are on G Suite. Um, for digital whiteboarding, we use Mural, uh, which is an amazing app to recreate physical spaces online to virtual collaboration. We run workshops using this program. Uh, for shared documentations, we use Google Drive, Google Docs, which I think is one of the better alternatives out there nowadays, but Office 365 works as well. Um, and those are the main tool that, tools that we use. Uh, and you can find more of those tools on the website, and we will also be adding more of those in the coming in the coming weeks. Anything you would like to add to this question? Uh, to this question, Alamika? No. Nope. No. So far, so good. Very those, clear. Yes. Thank you. Um, those are the questions that have been asked in the Q and A. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you had any question in the chat. There I were wasn't... questions in the chat, and I will. Yeah. So I saw Ariadna asked if you're going to send the names of the tools. Yes, they are on the website yeah. um, that I'm referring you to. Um, so then we answered her question as well. Um, and she was answered. commuting to the fridge and I really can only mo motivate uh, yeah. all of you to keep on uh, the, keep up the spirit with humor yeah. because <laughs> that's yeah. what we need. We need, to, we need to have a good laugh. Yeah, humor is powerful. And, so, uh, and, and what we mm -hmm. need is input for our session on uh, Friday. So, yeah. uh, so think... that's exactly. If you want to uh, get in touch with me, uh, there you see my email address. Uh, follow me or add me on LinkedIn. Happy to be in touch with you. Uh, this is Alamika's contact information. Alamika, can you uh, uh, glean a bit into the session on Friday? Yes. Um, I will. The session on Friday will tune into more specific um, tips on, on, on leadership and, and communication and, and culture. So specifically, um, so practice what you preach. And uh, so we're, it's going to be a more pragmatic session on how to communicate with very pragmatic communication uh, tips. And also, um, what does it mean? What does this whole situation mean for your leadership? And um, maybe uh, when you're thinking of building your culture, shaping your culture, how can you do it with everyone um, working from home? So this is, um, this is a sneak preview of how I think we can proceed together on Friday. But again, um, uh, most important uh, for us is um, your inputs. And uh, so let us know what you would like um, us to proceed with. Yeah, so we also got a question on, uh, on uh, a bit about vlogging. Uh, I'm not gonna answer it live, but I typed uh, in the answer in the chat. So if you're interested, you can check the answer in the chat. Uh, in closing, my, my final thought, I think that now is your moment to decide what culture you want to evolve in. Whether or not you're going to work remotely, whether or not you're going to go back to having everyone work in the office, 
I think there's merit into saying that now is the time for you to think about what the, what's the culture you want to have. As the world is going to be different, the world already is different, and next week is going to be very different than what we have seen today. This is part of the new reality we live in, uh, and so I hope you can take some time to think, and don't just think alone, think together with your team, have brainstorm session about those as well. So um, that was all. Um, I, I think it was a terrific webinar. I, I hope you agree with me. I feel honored to have had the opportunity uh, to share with you um, this morning. Again, as I said, I hope that in the slightest way, even it might uh, give you an idea, spark an inspiration as to what you can do or not. Uh, happy to get any feedback from you as to what you have tried. I think we're in a continuous process of always learning, always learning, always tweaking a bit. So I can always, always use uh, your insights. If you try out some of the things that we shared, uh, please let us know how it goes. If you have any frustrations, share those with us as well. Happy to help you look into it. So we are, in my case, I, I want to say I'm, I, I am available for you. Uh, call me if you, if you want to talk about anything. Uh, I'm happy to assist you. Um, in the in the in the coming weeks and getting over this pandemic, this crisis, and to a next and better version of you, yourself, your companies, and our beautiful island, Curacao. Elamika, thank you very much for joining me this morning and for your contribution. Looking forward to your session on Friday. Gideon and Selina, thanks. Uh, Miles, thanks as well for your support. And Chata, you're doing a beautiful job. Keep doing at it and uh, have a great day. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Daniel and uh, Elamika. Um, thank you for the compliments, but I want to thank you as well for um, giving us um, so many tips and tricks on this very relevant uh, topic. Um, as a person who is working from home as well, there are so many things I'm also struggling with. So these were tremendous uh, tricks and tips. Uh, thank you for that. And there are certainly, or there are many things I'm going to look into. And uh, for example, the Slack and distinguishing WhatsApp from, from, let's say, work and the whole psychology behind it, yeah. because we usually use WhatsApp for social things. And um, the fact that you're going to use it for work as well just messes up so many things. And, yeah, um, it's true. It just, yeah. yeah, so. Um, yeah, keep it yeah, separate. That's, yeah. um, that's wonderful. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I want to invite everyone to join into our next webinar, which is taking place at two o'clock, um, which is going to be the HR impact, a survey analysis by Chata given by Crystal Willems. And um, obviously, I want to invite everyone as well to tune into um, part two of this webinar on Friday with Alamika and Daniel, of course. Um, it's going to be at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, so I think that's about it. Thank you so much. And we'll keep in touch. Everyone, you're gonna, everyone who uh, tuned into this webinar is um, going to get the, the recording, of course, and all members will get the presentation as well. So the webinar as well. Yeah. Yes, awesome. perfect. Thank you. Have Take a great care. day. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Thanks, bye -bye. everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.